Hello everyone, this is Orhan Adam. In this video, we are going to talk about stocks and their valuation, which is chapter 9 of our financial management book. Well, let me try to motivate you before we start this chapter. First of all, you are going to see Apple stock prices on your screen right now. I'm going to start it from January 1st, 2020. And I'm going to show you the returns, rate of returns of Apple stock in years. First of all, I will start with... Uh, 2020 so right now this is the rate of return starting from January 1st to the end of 2020 the rate of return in that year is 82 percent now let's take a look at um, 2021 these red lines are going to show you the rate of return of Apple stock starting from January 1st more or less to the end of December so I'm just doing it like visually not checking the exact dates but it is approximately 29 percent rate of return in 2021 now last and not not the least let's do 2020 up to now which is uh, november of 2022 okay again starting from january of this year 2022 up to today the rate of return of apple stock is almost negative 22 percent uh, so let's review once again 82 percent in 2020 29 percent 2021 negative 22 percent in 2022 so basically what i'm trying to say is over the long run returns in the united states stock markets as well as in other countries are very volatile so this is an example from apple to determine whether a stock is fairly priced you first need to estimate the stock's true value or intrinsic value with this objective in mind, in this chapter, I will describe some models that analysts have used to estimate the intrinsic values of stocks. As you will see, though it is difficult to predict stock prices, we are not completely in the dark. Indeed, after studying this chapter, you should have a reasonably good understanding of the factors that influence stock prices. Now, let's take a look at the models. The stock price is simply the current price and it's easily observed for public publicly uh, traded companies. By contrast, the intrinsic value which represents the true value of the company cannot be directly observed and it has to be estimated. So on your screen you see three methods to estimate the intrinsic value of a company. The first one is discounted dividend model, the second one is corporate valuation model and the third one is models based on market multiples. So let's start with the very first one. Uh, the first one is based on the idea that value of uh, any stock or any financial instrument is the present value of all future dividends uh, expected to be generated by the stock. So basically, we are supposed to discount every single future cash flow uh, to find the price or value of any financial instrument. So in this setup, we have a stock which has various dividends starting from the very first period and goes all the way to the infinity and we are supposed to discount it so this is the formula basically we are discounted the first dividend by the interest rate to the power one second dividend which is going to be given in the second time period so it's going to be discounted uh, by uh, to the power two and the third dividend and the cube etc etc all the way to the infinity well this is the formula what we basically use excel sheet to calculate the present value of the models which i will show you in a moment this formula assumes that we buy a stock and we keep it forever but most of the time this is not the case generally we buy a stock now keep it for a period of time and receive the dividends and sell it in the future so we are supposed to have something like this so we buy the stock right now for a price p0 we receive the dividend D1 and we expect to sell it for price P1. So P0 is the price we pay, P1 and D1 are the prices we are going to receive in the future. This is a very simple setup. There's only one period. I buy it today, I sell it tomorrow. The holder of the stock is supposed to receive D1 dividend and P1, which is expected price in the future. And the price of the stock is supposed to be both the dividend and the price of the stock discounted by one plus R, just because there's only one period. If there were two, then we would be using one plus R to the square. 
So let's take a look at an example to understand this. Uh, this example is saying that there is an Ohio engineering company. It's supposed to pay $1 dividend and sell it for $27.50 at the end of one period. So again, it's a very simple setup. There is only one period. The question is, what is the fair intrinsic price if the investor requires 14% rate of return? Let me draw the setup first. So the investor is paying P0 dollar now and is supposed to receive $1 in the future plus $27.50 by selling the stock. So he is going the cash inflow of this stock is $28.50. So we have to discount these two cash inflow by 14% which is like this. The fair price of the stock should be $1 dividend discounted. $27.50 discounted. So this gives me $25 uh, using the formula. Uh, alternatively, we can use an Excel sheet to calculate this $25. So here's an Excel sheet. In Excel, we are going to use PV function, right? PV, open the parenthesis, it's asking the rate. So what's what kind of rate of return the investor is expecting? It's 14%. NPER is number of periods. There's only one period. A TMT is the periodic payment, which means the dividends. So that's $1 too. And FE is the future value. How much future value the investor is expecting? Well, he's expecting to sell it for $27.50. When you close the parenthesis and hit enter, it gives you $25 uh, in parentheses or in red. This means that it's negative, in which in turn means that you are supposed to pay it. So this is going to be a cash outflow. So $25 is the answer to this question. In more complex and more realistic scenarios is that there's more than one period. So there might be multiple periods, two, three, four, five, and periods. In these kind of cases, again, as I showed in the beginning of the lecture, we are supposed to discount every single dividend plus the price that the investor is expecting to sell the stock at period end. Okay, so this is going to be expecting selling price. Whereas all these Ds are dividends. Let's take a look at an example to illustrate this. Uh, this example says there's an investor considering to purchase a share of a stock and holding it for five years, which means that there are five periods. Assume that the investor's rate of return is 14%, which is again the same, it's R. Dividends from the stock are expected to be $1 for five years and the expected selling price of the stock at the end of five years is $44. The setup is this, the investor is going to receive five $1, so these are going to be the dividends and the price. So these are going to be the expected cash inflows. Well, you can either discount every single item here one by one using a formula, discount every single of these dividends, or alternatively, again, you can use an Excel sheet. Well, again, let's use the PV function. Now the rate is 14% again. Number NPER is number of periods. Now the number of periods is five, not one. PMD, the periodic payments are the dividends, it's one, they are one dollar. And the future value, the expecting selling price of this stock is $44. When you close the parenthesis, hit enter, it gives you $26.29. So this is the answer to this question. Okay, uh, up to here we discussed the discounted dividend model for valuing a firm's common stock. This procedure is widely used, but it is based on the assumption that we can forecast the dividends reasonably well but that always might not be true, which means that we might not reasonably estimate the dividends of the company. In this case, we use the second model, which is called corporate valuation model. In this model, instead of estimating the dividends of the company, we would estimate the free cash flow of the company. FCF stands for free cash flow. Well, free cash flow is estimated by adding these two terms. The first term in brackets represents the amount of cash that the company is generating from its existing operations and the second term is subtracted because it is the money uh, which is planned to spend investments. So we are supposed to estimate the free cash flow of the company for every single period. So once we estimate it, we are going to take the present value of all future cash flows using the discount rate. So market value of the company is going to be addition of these two terms. We are going to calculate the market value of the company's operations 
by taking the present value of all future cash flows of so the first term here is going to be calculated using the free cash flows that I showed you a moment ago. So once we have the free cash flow of the companies for every single period, we are going to discount it. So these two terms are exactly the same. So market value of the company's operations is equal to present value of the future cash flows. So market value of the company is going to be addition of these two values. Market value of company's operations plus, plus market value of the company's non-operating assets. Thus, the corporate valuation model is going to be applied in four steps. The first step is we are going to find the market value of the firm's operations by finding the present value of the firm's future cash flows. And then we are going to add the market value of the firm's non-operating asset on top of it. This is going to give us the market value of the company, one and two added. And then we are going to subtract the market value of the firm's debt. So debt should be subtracted. So this would give us the market value of the common stock. And then once we divide the market value of the common stock by the number of shares, we are going to get the intrinsic value of stock price. Okay, let's take a look at this example to understand the second valuation model. In this setup, the company's cash flows are already given us as follows. Right now, the cash flow is negative 5 million. And then from then on, it's going to be 10 million for every single period. So in this very simple setup, we are supposed to calculate the, the present value of the free cash flow of the company. And then we are going to calculate the market value and divide it by number of shares. So let's start with the very first setup. So the present value of $10 million forever is going to be as follows. So this is very analogous to a dividend model. So we are going to divide the first cash flow, like the first dividend, by R. So our first cash flow divided by 7%, it gives us 142.85 million. So this is going to be the present value of all future $10 million. The present value of all these $10 million is going to be 142.85. And then since this $5 million is, is already in present, we are going to subtract it. We end up with the present value of the free cash flow of the company as $137.85 million. So since the question is saying that there is no debt, we are not going to subtract anything. So the market value of the company is already going to be 137.85 million. The only thing we are supposed to do is divide this by the number of shares. So 137.85 divided by 10, it gives us $13.78. So this is going to be the intrinsic value of the stock price. Once again, in this very simple example, there is no debt and the cash flow of the company is exactly the same every period. We first take the present value and then we find the market value of the company. We divide market value of the company by number of shares and we find the intrinsic value of the stock price. Once again, this is a very simple example. In the next example, we are going to have a little bit more complex setup, which will give us a more realistic picture. Now let's take a look at that one. Okay, this setup is a little bit more realistic version of the previous one. The difference is uh, the company's future cash flows are growing at a rate of 5%. So the growth is not zero. So the first period is negative five and the second period is 10 third period 20 and then from that period on the growth rate is 5% so the company's free cash flows free cash flow grows so first of all we are supposed to take the free take the present value of all future cash flows and then subtract the debt which is going to be given as 40 million and divided by number of shares so to calculate the free cash flow of this company i am going to divide the setup into two pieces the first piece is going to be uh, up to period three and the second period is going to be from three period three on okay so this is going to be uh, the first setup so left hand side is going to be the first setup right hand side is going to be the second setup from this period on this is going to be my new period zero this is going to be my new period one 
So my only aim is to calculate the present value, the period 3 value of all future cash flows from period 4 on on. So we are going to take the present value of this free cash flow, period 5 cash flow, period 6 cash flow, etc. We are going to do this using a formula that we are very familiar with. This is going to be D1 over R minus G, which we use with dividend models. So basically, the present value, meaning the period 3 present value of all future cash flows, is going to be period 4 cash flow divided by R minus G. So this is going to be 1050. So 1050 is going to be present value of all future cash flows from period 4 and on. So I'm going to add 1050 to period 3. Okay, the next step is going to be to take the present value of all these four cash flows. First one, second one, and two third ones. Okay, so this is a present value of $5 million is here. The present value of $10 million is here. The present value of period 3, $20 million is here. And this is going to be the present value of period 3, $1,050. We add all of them up to come up with the final present value of all future cash flows as $877.5 million. So this is going to be our present value of future cash flows. And the next step is going to uh, add non-operating income, which is, which is zero, which is not given to question, and subtract the firm's debt. So firm's debt is given as $40 million. So I'm going to subtract $40 million from present value of future cash flows which gives me 837.5. This is going to be market value of the equity. Last but not the least, I am just going to divide this market value of the equity by number of shares to find the just intrinsic value of one single share, which is $83.75 million. So this concludes the question. Okay, the third method, which is called firm multiples method, is not covered in detail in our book. So that's why I'm just going to define it and tell you the basic idea and then conclude the chapter here. So this method is called firm, firm multiples method. The multiples method is a valuation theory based on the idea that similar companies should be valued at similar prices. So this method assumes that the type of ratio used in comparing the firms, such as uh, operating margins, price to earnings ratio, the PE ratio you see on your screen, is the same across similar firms. That's the whole idea of this method. As I said, it's not covered in very much detail in the book, so I think this much of uh, information should be enough. And yeah, this is all about chapter 9. I hope you enjoyed the chapter. See you in the next videos.